Hey, what's going on? <clears throat> what's going on? I know we said it before. People have been saying it for 100 years, or at least the last 60, 70 years. And the main people who have been saying it have been people who are immigrant groups coming here, co-opting <clears throat> our world, then trying to tell us where we need to go. Like I was arguing with somebody on, um, I think it was the Haven Bullets channel when he talked about that microphone check. You tell them Caribbeans had no influence on the creation of hip hop. They know that's the case. So they come back to you with some Caribbeans had influence on black American culture. So the guy's arguing with me. He's bringing up Prince Hall Freemasonry. I shot back at him and said, well, you know, Caribbeans did not create Freemasonry. If anything, Prince Hall was telling the white man, I want to be down with you. Please, master, please. Let me go bring by these black Americans. And I also informed him. Hold on a second. I also informed him that uh, the majority of black Americans are not Masons. And if you want to go buy Masonry. With blacks and Prince Hall. Then it's safe to say that the ones who made their way to the top were not black Americans out of it. And it's safe to say that, you know, you had infiltrators hijacking the culture. And I also let it be known that Prince Hall, Barbados, and Jamaicans are under the British crown. So if anything, they're doing the work of the British trying to take over this country like you should be able to see right now but so they've been calling for unity pan-africanism uh uniting around being african as opposed to uniting around being black which is the better union it's uniting around a nondescript person which is African despite what people might think about the title of being an African or not this is why people like me we always ask you to describe an African and if you notice the Afrocentric Pan-Africans they can't do it ask them the simplest questions and watch them buck dance. And the reason why you have to ask them to do it is because they say we are Africans or we are an African people. What is that? If you ask an uh, uh, African right now, they'll tell you it's anybody from Africa. You go on these YouTube channels. Where a lot of these Africans are, and I hate when people use the word continental Africans, trying to imply that we're, we are Africans too, just not on the continent. No, those are Africans. We're black Americans. But they'll try to imply, those people don't know what an African is either, because now they're talking about something called sub-Saharan African. And I noticed them and all these uh, coon, matter of fact, Chief X got me blocked too. That's how you can tell agents, man. When you when you come out with something and you claim it's true, you should be able to back it up. But when you block people, we already know what the deal is. So, These Africans don't know anything. I, I've been telling people this for years. And the reason why I go by my personal interactions with them. They're not paying Africanists. They don't believe in Africans being all one people. 
They don't believe in African unity. These are the things of made up by the Pan-African, mainly from the Caribbean. And for me, if the Caribbean wants to do all that, fine. But start with the Caribbean. And then Hispanics of the black world. Because if you look at these people, they'll say, well, they speak Spanish, they're not black. That's just the language. But any other people, people speak Portuguese, you want to call them black. Speak French, you want to call them black. But why, why, why is Spanish off limits? But Portuguese <laughs> is there. Which, which language is more common? Spanish or Portuguese? I mean, come on. We, we, we really got to stop this madness. And that's what I say with Go Black to Africa, too. You know, he's traveling the world. That's cool. But he travels the world. And goes to see black people in these different places. But he comes in with his mindset. And trying to impose it on these people. When he went to Morocco. That was in his chat room when he was showing that video. He wants to tell the Moroccan black guys that they're slaves. From sub-Saharan Africa. Why would you say that? Then he got them to repeat that bullshit. And they can't even tell you where the fuck they came from in so-called sub-Saharan Africa. See, you got these people trying to tell you or tell Africans in North Africa, oh, well, you're, even though this is Africa, you're not originally from Africa. You're originally from this part of Africa. Only the white man was designed for the hot-ass desert in your Africa. You see how foolish that shit sounds? Keep in mind that the forested regions of Africa are cooler than the Sahara Desert. Keep that in mind. The trees cover the sun and give you shade. The hot open desert, anybody from a state with flat uh, plain surfaces like a Texas or something like that, Arizona, you already know the deal. <laughs> but this sub-Saharan African shit, I don't know why it's returning into the lexicon of people when Afrocentrists and everybody else did everything that they could to get rid of the goddamn term. Now these cool Negroes want to bring it back. And then when you ask them what a sub-Saharan African is, you know they can't tell you what that is because they can't even tell you what an African is. But when you hear me ask these people questions and all that kind of stuff is because they're lying. They'll trip over themselves when you inquire. Because they're lying. See, when you're telling the truth, you won't be tripping over yourself with the answers. By the way, I went, looked in his Wendy's app and I got a off from a soda, uh, any size soda for a dollar. I took it because, you know, they, they got that fancy machine where you can mix all the uh, different flavors that you can't find in stores. You realize this soda, if the app didn't have it for a dollar, shit was going to cost me about four dollars and fifty cents. <laughs> it's fucking crazy. Then McDonald's used to have any size uh, soda for for a dollar. They took that away. But looking at this Wendy's cup, it does look bigger than the McDonald's cup. But of course, Burger King haven't been to Popeyes in years. But I think Popeyes had a big ass uh, container of soda. It's a bigger. And there was a Mexican in there. She was acting like she didn't want my business, and that's what made me want to do this video. I'm gonna get to the main point, which is unity. But, um, 
tired of these fucking Mexicans, man. They, they getting on my last nerve. That's why anybody gets out of hand, I'm going to tell them, motherfucker, you lucky to be in this motherfucking country. Shit. Still trying to figure out what the white man, aside from work and jerking of other people out of jobs, and mainly black people, what the fuck would he need with these Mexicans to be here? But before I get to that, let me just say this about these times and this these African shit. Go black to Africa. I've been begging these black guys to go to North Africa for the longest time. Then when he finally goes, he's talking sub-Saharan. Why would you go to North Africa talking some sub-Saharan African shit? When you're in the Sahara. Well, well, you're repeating what the white man told you. And again, I got to say this. If you think that any black person in North Africa came from slaves from sub-Saharan Africa, what you're telling yourself and other black people is, is what the white man has been telling you. That black people are so dim-witted that they could not cross the hot Sahara Desert. They had to stay where the fucking trees are at. Even though the Kalahari Desert is in so-called sub-Saharan Africa, nobody disputes black people going there. <laughs> so they can handle that desert, but they can't handle the one in North Africa. Why? Because it's connected to Europe. That's why. And that's where all the history is. That's why. So you're saying that the black people can't, and even if you want to deny it, that's what you're saying, is that Africans are so stupid, they got to stay in the trees. So that defeats a lot of things. That defeats black people being intelligent, number one. <laughs> and I guess it, it, I guess you people have been saying that the, ice, the, the white man is the ice man that is only adapted from the cold. So how the fuck does he survive in a hot ass desert if you can't? And that's your fucking land. Get the fuck out of here with that shit. And it also defeats ancient Kemet being black. You got to dismiss that now because obviously black people uh, were confined to sub-Saharan Africa. So there's no way in hell they could have made it up to the Sahara. I know some people will say what the white man said. Well, the Sahara used to be green at one time. That's still suggesting that, oh... When there's plants, there's black people. But when there's deserts, that's when white people come along. And these same idiots will tell you white skin developed from northern regions. How does it develop in a hot-ass desert then, if that's the case? And if you go with this sub-Saharan shit... This also defeats the out of Africa theory. Because obviously, if black people stop dead on a dime as soon as the desert hits, then that means that they didn't have the wherewithal to leave Africa. So if that's the case, and that's what you're saying. So if that's the case then that means that for other people to have developed, they could not have come from Africa. So you see how logical that fits? So now, what is your next lie that you're going to come up with? Now you're trapped. <laughs> so now what? So you have this new rise in Uncle Tomism. I'm guessing these people paid off. Chief Chief X is nothing but a crackhead and a coon. Go black to Africa. He might be misguided, miseducated by Pan Africanism. How do you go to somebody else's country and tell them where they came from? I mean, you go into Africa, you're telling the actual indigenous Africans that you are not from this part of Africa, you're from some other part of Africa. 
How the fuck does that work out? How can you have the nerve to do that shit? And also what you're saying is that anybody white or white style in North Africa, they're indigenous to that, that part of Africa. You are championing championing white supremacy. That's what you're doing. And if this is Masonic directed, once again, apparently Masonry <laughs> is not working out too well for black people as a group. It's only working out for individuals. And, it's, and that, that too is a, a, a supporter of white supremacy. So, I don't know what it is that these people are getting at. I don't know what their motives are, but I know this. The motives has to be to brainwash the new generation. Because when I was a teenage hotep, we were getting brainwashed into the opposite of what these uh, coons are teaching. And we were being brainwashed into believing that we were Africans. And then there were some who want... See, that's the thing, too. That's what I always notice, too. They want to talk about Egypt. But then they weren't sure enough of themselves, so they would talk about your Nubian queen and not an Egyptian queen. And I always said, damn, are they scared? If, you, if you're talking about something, you got to stand on it. If you're not sure of it, don't, don't, talk, don't talk about it. So, Go Black to Africa was essentially saying, I, I, he had one in uh, Portugal, I didn't watch the rest of that, but if anything, I, I, I assume it's going in the same direction. Even though he did talk about before 1492 or 1400s. You better not. He better not be talking about Moors ruling uh, uh, Lisbon, in Portugal and Iberia. Because how can that be if he said that the Moroccan blacks came from Sub-Saharan Africa as slaves? <laughs> so, to me, these people might as well just stop talking. I, I mean, that's the way it is to me. Uh, But that's what they're trying to do in, 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 in today's day and age. And when people block you from their channels from discussing it, that means it's spreading propaganda. And they don't want to hear anybody else going in the other direction. So I will say this. Let me get to the unity. I can say it. Everybody else has been saying it for quite some time, but it's not going to happen. But it's going to have to happen <laughs> because I'm looking at every other group. East Indians of the various types, even the subset of East Indians, they stick together. I was just looking at Hackensack, New Jersey. You got that uh, uh, Indian Sikh. Uh, mayor turban and all I don't know what the demographics of Hackensack is but I assume that that's one of those uh, cities that, that's uh, on the Hudson probably uh, with a lot of uh, well to do people in the tech and industry tech industries and other industries in other words they have money I told you about how I saw them in Jersey City, not sinks, but other East Indians. And there were the money set. They're getting money. They take over certain industries. They only put their own people in. And we're usually fucked. Then when black people get in, in the door with something, they're so preoccupied with wanting to be the only nigger 
that they don't want to bring in somebody else. You got to bring in somebody else, whether you want to or not. I know most of you don't want to, but you have to. Why? Because you need allies. And if you can't get allies with your own people first, you're not going to get any allies. You got enemies. Whether they're smiling in your face enemies <laughs> or not. Just by them not fucking with you makes them an enemy. And keep in mind, all oh, these motherfuckers are from other countries. Then I saw a commercial, some gold paw running for some, uh, I think it was Morris, not Morris County, whatever the fuck the county was in New Jersey. I said, God damn, these motherfuckers are taking over. See, now they getting, they had the money already. A lot of these Sikhs own a whole lot of shit. The 7-Elevens, uh, a lot of Popeyes, Dunkin' Donuts. A lot of shit you can't see or don't even fathom. Jacksonville Jaguars, Sacramento Kings. Notice how the white man never talks about their color. Because you start talking about East Indian color, then you gotta, you gotta talk about blackness. That's why they stay away from talking about their color. But the white man got a love affair with these people. I, I guess he's realizing, damn it, that's where my origins are from. Got to hook my people up. But see, they can maneuver and get paid. There's no worries in this country. They can dress in cultural dress, have the complicated names, all, all types of shit. But <laughs> nothing happened. Us, we get harassed, and a lot of Negroes fall for it. Negroes on TV. When you mention color, brother, you talk with the street jive talk. Those are ways that you're saying, I'm black, I'm different. You got to stop that. That's why I hate when I go someplace and somebody's like, hey, brother. Especially if they're black. I really, I don't like it when it's somebody else, too, that says, brother. Why do I have to be a brother? Why can't I be a sir? Or just call me by my name, or if you don't know my name, call me sir. Don't call me brother. Because I know they're not talking about brother, we're brothers in humanity. Because they see I'm black, I got to be a brother. And I was watching this Insta guy, this just popped into my mind. I was watching this Instacart commercial. This black guy and his son were in a stadium. And I guess he was supposed to be ordering food with the Instacart. Now, I will say that maybe this guy didn't know what kind of foods they were going to put on the screen. But a lot of these black people, whether they're international or not, man, they, they, they're playing you with these commercials. Now, these black people that do these fried chicken commercials, they know exactly what the fuck they're doing. Why do, you, why do you think they keep having black people do fried chicken commercials? They don't need black people uh, to be on commercials for fried chicken. Black people know if they want fried chicken or not. Or whatever kind of food. But he was ordering the first product that came up was uh, a bunch of bananas. And you know damn well that watermelon would have been too obvious. But banana, that's the other fruit that they try to be funny with. A lot of black people don't catch that shit. They could have just as well used something neutral. They could have said lasagna. They could have said uh, fucking cheesecake. Any damn thing but bananas. But like I told you what they did in that uh, Her on Her Majesty's uh, Secret Service movie. When they had the black person, they were serving people cultural meals. They served the uh, black lady uh, fucking bananas. But see, she knew what they were doing. But she accepted the shit and carried on acting. I can't believe that black people will be that dumb that they won't know when they're getting dissed. Now, I know white people like getting slick. And a lot of black people who aren't used to being around white people and knowing a lot of their tricks, they don't know when white people are getting slick. 
So in a sense, maybe black people are dumb in that case. And a lot of foreign blacks, they, they laugh because it's no thing to them. As long as they can get something from the white man, they're all right. So the white man lets everybody else be at who, are they, who they are. East Indians, these Mexicans who, man, it's way too many of them. Getting, uh, it's getting annoying. And they're placing them in positions, giving them everything. East Indians, they got money. Mongol Asians, they seem to be kind of silent now. They don't want any, any kind of problems, but these Indians, they're not known for social issues and shit, but they want to run from politics because, you know, once you get a lot of money, you want the power. You start getting into politics because now you can help regulate and hook yourself up. And you want recognition, name recognition that spreads East Indians around. Now, you know, East Indians don't have no love for us. And I know some of you saying, oh, well, I thought you said they were black. They still are. Clarence Thomas is black. Chief X is black. But the Still, that doesn't mean that they're down with the program. So, that's why I said, if you can't get unity amongst friends, amongst your people, you better do it amongst your family. And I, uh, another thing that's discouraging, I, you know, you go on YouTube, I guess you watch one video here, there, then next thing you know, you get news feeds from uh, news from different parts of the country. And unfortunately, it's the same thing from coast to coast. Black people shooting black people for the dumbest reasons. That's a problem, of course. That doesn't seem to be going anywhere anytime soon. Uh, oh, that's what the fuck what happened. I was wondering why the uh, fucking time had <laughs> felt like it changed. It changed the time in the, in the car. But uh, I was wondering what the fuck was going on. But I'm seeing other groups, nationalities. See, they come from other countries. They got their cultures. Italians hook each other up. Yeah, they shot each other, but they got a, a, a more or less an order. If somebody is Italian and they're uh, a manager or owner or something, especially if it's an Italian restaurant or something or eatery, they hire Italians to run the shit. Then they hire Mexicans. I guess because they save on labor. And um, they don't hire us. If they hire black people, like I said, just look around your own experiences. They're usually foreign blacks. And those foreign blacks either have an accent or they sound like they came from the suburbs. They sound white because they usually did come from the suburbs. I was watching this uh I guess it's the new thing I'm into on uh, YouTube because <laughs> every time they come up with something good, a good genre of videos, then people start complaining and YouTube starts taking the videos down and shit. And then you lose the good, good uh, genre, like the auditing videos that people starting to fall back on those because they, I guess, demonetizing a lot of them. So now you got the murder interrogation uh, genre, I guess you can call it. <laughs> And that goes with police action, arrests, and shooting videos, I guess. Kind of like seeing them all. So they had this black guy who shot his wife. I forgot what town. I think this was in New Orleans or somewhere. I think. Shot his wife because he thought she he was cheating on her or she was cheating on him. Then he cut her up. I didn't finish watching. I just started watching the beginning. Then the guy was very well spoken, Haitian. Very well spoken. 
you know, like Jonathan uh, Vilma, when you hear him speak, very well spoken. White people love those kind of black people, but don't think for one minute that white people don't know the nationalities of these black people. See, that's the mistake a lot of us make. We think that, and we don't really think it, it's just that you got these coon agents out here trying to put the thoughts into your head to make you think that white people and others see you all as the same. White people know who the fuck is who. That's why they place particular black people in particular positions and keep your black ass away. Because the cop even said, oh, you're Haitian, right? The guy didn't have an Haitian accent at all, and he was kind of light. I'm sure he's going by the name. He's like, yeah, sometimes I get Haitian and Jamaican a little confused sometimes. He knows who you are. But when the crimes are done and splattered, splashed across the TV, that's when the end result is implied black American. So we look bad. Then people cringe in fear when <laughs> you're near them and nobody's around. Before, I used to think, you know what? I don't want to get them concerned, so let me try staying away from them so they won't get scared. And then after a while, I said, you know what? Who gives a fuck if they get scared? That's their problem. You know? That's what all that's what the brainwashing does. But see, when you watch these police interrogations, you see there's a white people are crazy. <laughs> They got a, a lust for killing. Kill people over the smallest things. And then a lot of these cases, you see group killings. And Hispanics always trying to be white. But try to hang with the white kids and do as they do. End up going to prison. Trying to impress them. So, even Hispanics who are different nationalities and different races. Different races within a nationality. They more or less stick together. Oh, oh, yeah, I'm glad I, I just thought about it right now. I was in the Sam's Club parking lot. Literally last evening. I think I, I when, did, when did I get out of the store? Allensford, New York. <clears throat> Went in there to buy a few things. Really, only one thing. The six gallon of water they always come up with. It's like, damn, the shit sells the fuck out. Now, if I had a fucking minivan or something, I'd stock up on those shits because it's like $4.50 for six or $5.50 for six. Then they don't get the shit again. I'm like, what the fuck is the hold up? It's only water. So I went in there because they got this new product, Turkey Canadian Bacon. So I said, let me, let me get that. And they keep removing products. That's why I hate that particular location, but it's the only one around. Uh, what else did I get? Just Thomas's English muffin and... The fuck else? There's one other thing. Ah, I forgot what the fuck it was. But the other... The Canadian bacon, that was the main thing, but <clears throat> that, that I want. The other shit I got just to... <laughs> say I got something but it was very crowded in there <clears throat> and um, you know I, I hate when people go into stores when it's very crowded they don't move they block an aisle they just stand there looking at shit looking at their phone not knowing people gotta come through and then when I move fast cause I, I don't like being trapped in stores I like coming in getting my shit and getting the hell out <clears throat> and they look at me like, what are you doing? I dare one of these Mexicans to say something, which they don't say nothing. And I always expect somebody to have a gun on them, too. But God damn it, when you see a nigga coming through, move the fuck out the way. Don't get mad. Let's get the fuck out the way. 
Then I hate when you let people come through and they're just staring at you. Like, what do I do? So then I say, man, fuck it. I ain't, we ain't having a Mexican standoff. So I just go. Anyway. That's uh, the side part. The main part <laughs> was these foreigners. And I'm sure a lot of you used to these uh, Romanian gypsies that you probably think are from somewhere somewhere in Asia, Indians or some shit like that. But a lot of these people are Romanians pulling scams, begging scams, gypsies, and um, some from Afghanistan too. So it's shocking to see Mexicans uh, partake in this type of shit. Now, for all I know, this lady probably looked Mexican, but she could have been Romanian herself. New scam. At least it's new to me. New begging scam. Uh, I didn't like the fact that this old lady was leaning, leaning on my motherfucking car. I was about to tell her, hey, man, I just got my shit waxed, man. What's up, What's up with this? <laughs> Don't put fingerprints on the shit now. So, before I can even get my shit in my car, I don't know why she targeted me. She should know better <laughs> than to ask a black man for some goddamn money. You should know better than that. <laughs> Especially a black man who's in a hurry. The store is crowded as a motherfucker. I'm like, man, I'm, I'm just trying. Once I get out, I'm trying to get the hell out of here and the hell out of the whole area. That's the way I operate. Before I can even open my car door, this lady's coming up to me talking about, I need $5. See, now these, the begging is different. Before, it's like, you got some change for the bus, change for the train. Uh, I need to get something to eat. This lady coming up with a minimum that she wants. Talking about, I need $5 to help me get back to my country. And you know, with my smart ass... <laughs> I said, damn, it's going to cost you a whole lot more than $5 to get back to your country. And I said, oh, now that I think about it, how the hell did you get here in the first place? <laughs> you know? I mean, what, the, what, what kind of begging is this shit for? I mean, you could have saved everybody a lot of money by just staying where the fuck you were at. <laughs> and then she um, takes off one shoe. I don't know what the fuck she was trying to show me. I know she was trying to uh, look pitiful. Tuck my, my feet or something like that. I couldn't understand what the fuck was wrong with her feet. But whatever the fuck was or was not wrong. Only thing in my mind was this lady's old and about to die any minute. Any goddamn way. What the, who gives a fuck about the condition of her feet? I don't know who the fuck this lady is. And you know, I don't have any qualms about telling the lady, okay, man, get the fuck out of here now. I don't give a damn how old you are. After you get on my nerves, get the fuck away from me. I'm trying to get in my fucking car before my... uh uh, uncured, uh, turkey, uh, bacon starts warming up, you know? <laughs> Shit. So then I said, nah, I ain't got no cash on me. That's, that's my new thing. Because that's what white people, uh, they don't really carry cash a lot. Tell them I ain't got no, uh, cash. Nobody uses cash. So then that's when she dropped her minimum five bucks down to, well, you got a quarter or anything. I said, I ain't got no cash, man. What do you think cash is? And she's like, oh, man. I, see, she could have been Romanian. She did have more of a Mexican look. She was darker than me. And those Romanians are darker than me, too. So for people like Chief X who uh, don't re realize it, Romanians, are they get brown skin. Dark brown, too. And they're from Europe. Uh, so, you know, I proceed to, she try, you know, they try to look pitiful. I don't, I don't care because I know the scheme because I, you know, I look at uh different videos and shit. I know how people, these foreigners, I know how they do it. I, I mean, to me, they have some nerve coming from so far away running game. So they want to try to use a old lady to tug on your heartstrings with her. I guess it was the deformed foot. As far as I'm concerned, I'm like, I don't give a fuck what condition your foot was in. You were walking with the shit <laughs> without a cane. So it can't be too bad. That's, that's how I think. You know? Uh, so then she goes over to this other guy while I'm putting the shit in my car. 
He looked like he could have been a Dominican or a Puerto Rican or something like that. This motherfucker fell for, for the for the kind. Gave her the money. I said, damn. I mean, damn. Now, she could probably thought I was Dominican, too, for all I know. That's probably what it was. But, uh, damn. Uh, see, you, you can't give these people the money. When you give it to them, they keep it going. Like the other day, Lower East Side. The other week, Lower East Side. The same old people that keep begging. Now, they know I come through there. Maybe they're so high. I know that black lady in particular, the one I gave the apples to. And then the uh, ring dings too later on. <laughs> um, she always comes to my car. A lot of times, if, if I'm at a light, I act like I'm on the phone, on the cell phone looking at something. And when I see them approaching, because they know they can't bang on your window. So I act like I don't see them. Because I'm like, I ain't got time for this shit. I don't even, you know, especially if I'm not even in the mood to just say I ain't got nothing. I don't even want to talk to them. I'm tired of this shit. Begging to be fucking dead. Go to rehab. So anyway, the car in front of me, they gave her some money. This time I was in the mood to talk because I had something to say. <laughs> so she came to my car. I rolled the window down. I said, what's going on? She's like, you got any money for a... Uh, Food, because I'm hungry. I just need a little more uh, change so I can get some food. I said, didn't the people in front of me uh, just give you some money? <laughs> she was about to laugh. And then she's like, yeah, but it wasn't enough. I said, shit, it's, it's something. <laughs> I, I, I really say this shit, too. Because they know, the reason why I do this shit is not to uh, put them down. is because I know that they're running game. That's why. And I'm not a, a contributor to that. Like I said, when I was a teenager, I ran into some money one day. A, a significant amount of money. And I was happy. I was like, damn, I'm about to buy me all these video games and shit. And um, somebody came up to me and asked me for some, some change that time. And I gave the man 20. Yeah. You know, I won't be doing that these days, but. I was happy. I was like, God damn, I'm on another world. So I give this man 20. Fuck it. That ain't hurt my pockets. Then a the guy came up to me and said, listen, man, why'd you do that? I said, what do you mean? I said, man, this is a motherfucking crackhead. He done smoked that shit up. I said, damn. I guess you're right. But I said, ah, oh, well, if that's his life. That's, that's what he wants to do. Then later on, I saw the guy again. And then that's when I started hearing about the Man, I got uh, X amount of money to catch the bus. I just need a little more than I can get on this bus. And I used to say to myself, why are you telling me? <laughs> you tell that shit to the bus driver. Don't tell it to me. <laughs> shit. <clears throat> so after that, that's when I stopped giving these fucking drug addicts uh, money. Cause yeah, I, I guess you can call me naive at the time. I guess naive, but I was happy too, cause I ran into some money. But when you keep seeing the same people out day in, day out, going to every fucking car that comes by, and then you got the uh, white lady in the wheelchair with no legs, almost trying to block cars and shit, daring you to hit her. Coming up with the chain shit. I'm like, man, damn. And I see these people doing this shit with the police out and on the bridge. And the police are right behind me seeing these people do it and the police don't do anything. I'm like, damn, I want to see the police spring into action. But they don't do anything. I said, well, I guess that these people are going to be out there. Even, even the police saw those people selling the little fruit on the bridges, too. Nothing. <laughs> you would think that they would keep them off because it's hazardous to your health. I was watching a fucking video with fucking police in some state uh, stopped a black guy from walking on the fucking uh, interstate and say, oh, no, you can't walk on here because it's uh, dangerous for you. And I guess that innocent danger 
got the kid uh, uh, fucking wrestled to the ground and arrested and shit. I'm like, shit. They make it look like they care about your safety, then they beat your ass and shit. I'm like, God damn. But we need unity. Because these fucking bums. Uh, uh, see, here's the problem. We're coming into some critical times because the white man is hooking the Mexicans up with the lower level jobs. Which means that if you even want it to do a job, you can't. And he's making them supervisors above you. You and your black ass. Motherfuckers don't even come from here. That shows a hierarchy that goes to show that if the white man wanted change, he doesn't have to uh, beg and, and, and put slogans on NFL uh, uniforms and helmets and shit. He can make the shit happen if he wanted to. Just like he makes it happen for the gays, makes it happen for uh, Israel, makes it happen for women, makes it happen for all these foreigners. That's the other thing. He hooks up them. Women do. Women and gays, I was just watching a news report. I don't know why it made the news, but some body ripped down a gay flag in some uh, fucking rest gay restaurant. You know damn well, I ain't eating from no gay restaurant. I know some of you might say, well, you never know who's making your food. They could be gay. Well, <clears throat> you know damn well they're going to be gay if you go to a gay restaurant. <laughs> That's for damn sure. You need to go to a gay restaurant for. I mean, is it a pickup bar? I mean, what the fuck? Look like some Hispanic shit. I'm like, man, who gives a fuck if you ripped that shit down? It's just a fucking flag. At least he ain't burned the restaurant down. Shit. Be glad. But people see people getting tired of that shit. Maybe, you know, you don't want to keep seeing that shit everywhere the fuck you go. I mean, damn, it's fucking annoying. The white man's hooking everybody else up but us. And if he's hooking us up with reparations, goddamn it was taking so long. See, I don't mind maneuvering the Mexicans in as long as we're going to get hooked up. But I see what the East Indians do. And the white man is just letting them all do it. I'm like... I just find it odd, man. It's like if you come from another country, you do what the fuck you want to do. But if you're a black American, you can't do shit. That's why they got to keep up the illusion of being a rapper will make you successful. Even though the music biz is dead. Sports. Getting lucky, winning the lottery, which of course means you're not winning nothing. Sports and entertainment. That's what they keep black people on. They don't want you to have even a small business because then you get you, you learn business acumen and finances. Everywhere I'm going, like in some uh, northern suburbs <clears throat> where gas stations or small businesses used to be white owned. Now these straight haired Arabic. Uh, people are taking them over. I'm like, where are these fuckers getting this money from? I know some of you might say, well, they got oil money. You know, to start up a gas station costs you at least a million dollars. And now they got the switch over that's happening right before your eyes with these electric uh, stations and vehicles. Maybe that's going to become a problem for these people. But the white man lets these people do what they want to do. They get money. They can discriminate on the hiring because they only hire their own people. I mean, have you ever seen black people working in a Chinese restaurant? Nope. I don't even see too many black people working in a fucking Italian spot. If you do even see one. Shit, the blackest motherfucker there might be the Italians them th themselves. Shit. And that's fucked up. Because black people are the ones who go and patronize them a lot. Especially on the pizzas. 
So you need unity with black people, but black people are hard headed and dumb, especially the weed smoking ones and the drinks who do nothing but sit at home, watch movies and smoke and drink all fucking day. Be on YouTube all day. <laughs> I mean, you got to understand. You're wasting time. You're a customer. You got these new age Negroes out here doing stupid shit like robbing, strong arm robbing liquor stores and getting killed for the shit. I mean, that's stupid. And they're mostly taking cheap liquor anyway because, you know, the cheap shit is on the shelves that you can pick up and the expensive shit is in the back. But this is what these Negroes these days are doing. I'm like, man, well, this is stupid. This is what they're doing. This is petty shit. And of course, we don't own any of the stores. East Indians keep coming up with new shit to uh, corner the market on. White man lets him do it in his uh, uh, hoods. And of course he lets them, them, them do it in our hoods. I mean, gotta get the money straight. Black people with money. See, that's the problem. See, we started this out with the Freemasonry and that keeps black people in check because they don't do anything with the money. People talk about the segment on Jay-Z with the library and shit. You got him, Jay the Peek, trying to look like they're broken bums and shit after having all this fucking money to try to act like they're down. Jay the Peek is talking about, I was a drug dealer. Yeah, how can we hear about this shit years ago? Jay-Z was the drug dealer. Now he's trying to act like he's down to earth with these fucking naughty dreads. Fuck out of here with this bullshit fucking library see this is that but that's what mason reed will get you if you play the game right but that's what it gets him but what does it get us see these other groups when you get something the group gets something even if the man let's say a man only gives 10 percent of what he made to the rest of the group in some capacity they're doing it and spreading the love. But with us, it's just me. They give us lip service, not money. I'm talking about the Jay-Z's, the Jada Pinkett's, and all these other motherfuckers. Lip service. Maybe it's like these other people said in the videos that they cannot do anything with their money. Because when you think about it, what do they do with their money? Buy the latest car. Buy another home after you bought all that shit. I mean, what do you have after that? See, I told you the East Indians, they buy property, commercial property. They own shit. Then they get into the politics and say, I, I want recognition. Because after a while, you're like, God damn, I'm rich. Nobody knows it. <laughs> shit, I want to at least be known. Before, they kept the low profile because they knew, you know, they stand out. But this white man is funny. Now, they keep talking about a browning of America. It's a forced browning, of course. And they got these Mexicans over you. You go around any business that, that you see and ask yourselves, how did Mexicans come in? And rise above black Americans in states that they're not even from. Because the white man put them there. But these Mexicans are not above the white man. You must discriminate. And we must stop listening to these coon, Uncle Tom coon agents on YouTube. Umar Johnson is one of them. You know, I was partially in his camp. That's why you never really heard me go in on him. 
deeply. But now I'm tired of his shit <laughs> because he talks about love matching, love making and all this kind of shit. Uh, vanilla Africans. He says the school is done. We point out to him on his videos that, OK, he's never uh, doing his videos from an office. Then he goes into somebody else's office and does videos. Then he goes back to his set with the uh, towel thing behind the set. You know, little black power booth. We never see his house. We never see his office. He claims he has a school. If he really had a school and it was ready to be open and was finished, he'd be constantly, not occasionally, but constantly doing videos from the school. From within the school, not the outside. Because if you got an office, you want to show that shit off. Windows should not be boarded up. Technically, there should be security riding around, armed security by now. But of course, you can't do all that unless you got some fucking tuition coming in or donations. You have not seen one faculty member, not one student. It's all bullshit. He's a fucking social media coon, a social media hustler, another Freemason agent. And I'm, I got to call it out because that's all the shit is with these uh, kooky individuals. I don't see any progress with these people. Sonny, well, not Sonny Carson, Billy Carson. All these fuckers. <clears throat> Nothing but foolishness. Nothing but brainwashing black Americans into inactivity and not participating in society. They tell you everything to do in an informal way. And then they get these real PhDs. They come up and they do the same thing. That's why I would always question these fucking PhDs. The real ones. That target black people who haven't even graduated high school. Why are they their target demographic? That's not, when you go to college, that's not who the fuck a PhD is targeting. They're targeting people within the academic world. Not people who are criminals and, and, and weed smokers. I know some people say, oh, what's wrong with smoking weed? I'll tell you what's wrong with smoking weed. Do you see the fucking East Indians constantly smoking weed? And the fucking Asians? Now, I have seen some Asians, but. And what's with these black people these days? I, I, Sarnetta had another person on. Claiming to be a fucking uh, uh, South Pacific Islander. That's two of them now. It's like they... That's, that's another scheme. Now all of a sudden they want to pick another culture. And a people to <clears throat> claim to be. Start taking names. Because we Tyron knows that guy that uh, was on that cute butter that time. And I had to call him out on that shit. Claiming to be from the fucking South Pacific. Nothing about him said South Pacific to me. That's why I said, let me call, see what's up with this guy. And then they uh, all got on me. Which was, of course, confirmation that it was full of shit. But that's the new scheme. Pacific Islanders. I've been saying this before. Most of you would never ever know if you had a Pacific Islander standing right next to you. You probably think it was a Dominican or some other type of black person not from the fucking Pacific Islands. But this is what's going on these days. Con after con after con, all these Freemason agents, the lowest level ones, they keep coming up with new con after new con. And why do they keep trying to brainwash us into the nonsense? Whether it's, uh, you know, bullshit such as uh, flat earth, uh, 
astral projection, telepathy, all this type of bullshit. Why? Why aren't they targeting white people? Huh? It's supposed to be Freemasonry, right? It's supposed to be for everybody, uh, blacks and whites, right? How come white people aren't getting targeted with this type of shit? Is it because they feel that they're smarter and wouldn't fall for the shit? I'm looking at those police interrogations, I see a lot of dumbass white people out here. I always say white trash are worse, uh, a whole lot worse than ghetto trash. That's for damn sure. Those are the people you really got to be concerned about. <laughs> <laughs> and my man driving a Maybach SUV Damn this motherfucker got cash But he ain't leaving though Maybe he got cameras or some shit <laughs> See me in the car and say let me move it They're funny They're funny But um We got to get unity somehow. I don't know how it's going to work. But if not, I guess we're, we're doing. We got too many people pulling us apart and keeping us apart. But whether it's a DR York, DR Sabi, DR Ben, uh, whoever the hell, you, hell else you could think of, or even a real PhD, they keep coming up one after the other with new BS outlandish claims and they're targeting us you should always ask yourself why are they targeting us and why do they keep coming with this fantasy land shit notice who the targeted targeted uh, demographics are people who probably didn't finish high school criminals people who Drink and smoke and do drugs all day. They figure those people are more susceptible to brainwashing and well, foolishness. They never tell you to get educated and go to college, I guess, because they figured if you didn't finish high school at the age of 25 or something like that, you're less likely to, likely to go to college and get a PhD or some shit like that. Or even, um, I'm sorry, not a PhD, a, a GED. <clears throat> so they don't even tell you that. So um, instead, they do everything, try to con you out of your fucking money. Credit repair, bullshit investments, uh, tonics, traveling, uh, <laughs> uh, secret uh, uh, jujus and <laughs> secret... Uh, Magical uh, 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 lucky charms and shit like that. <laughs> all, all types of shit. I mean, I, I can't believe that people had the nerve to even attempt to sell you on, on the type of shit that they sell you on. Sea moss, black seed oil. I mean, all this shit is just boggles the mind. That's part of the reason why I'm like, man, I'm tired of dealing with this shit because the white man got more money and more resources than I have. To try to educate people. I try to get. That's part of the reason why I go at these people directly. And that's part of the reason why they make sure that I don't get on. That's why people like Chief X fucking block me. Because he's like, fuck it. I can't, I can't explain myself. This motherfucker going to mess all my shit up. So it is what it is. Let me take this man's sparking space. See, I feel insulted. Really, I'm sitting here. I don't know. Maybe they got cameras on the outside of their car or something. Sees me here. I mean, moving it, it. You know, if I was trying to break in his fucking car, moving the car is not exactly gonna make me uh, not go over there and, and, and try to break into shit. I mean, you coming here with a fancy uh, vehicle and shit. I mean, other people got nice rides in here, but you coming with some shit like that. <laughs> I mean, he's trying to make a statement. 
Shit, I mean, this place is pretty fancy, but I think that car, I think that shit is well beyond this place, though. He wants to be a big shot. You can't be paranoid all night trying to move your car from a, this, this place to that place and shit. If you're that paranoid, don't get uh, the vehicle or buy you a house. How about that? But thanks for the space. <laughs> So, <laughs> with that, I'm out. Or am I? Was there something else I wanted to say? Uh, I did get my Amazon back. I watched. Not on Amazon, but I did watch. I'm into this Alfred Hitchcock shit now. I didn't know my man was a... Uh, in movies from the almost the beginning of uh, movie making. Downloaded his 1970s movies because they don't talk about those that much. And uh, got my Amazon Prime. I guess they want you to watch it on the app and not on the uh, browser because it doesn't seem to work in the browser. Finally finished watching Samaritan after about, what, a year and a half or so? <laughs> that shit was whack. That shit was boring. What else did I watch that, that I came away with thinking it was corny recently? Oh, oh, Megan. The unrated version. I was watching that shit. That shit had bad acting. It could have been good. I mean, we've seen this type of storyline before, like Frankenstein and all that kind of shit. It could have been good. Terminator, that's what it reminded me of, too. But it was poorly executed. And ultimately dull. Uh, watch that in 4K from a download. I, I I I deleted it as soon as it was over with. That was 10 gigs in size. I said this shit gotta go. And I also got me a new TV coming because um, it's a high sense. What is it? You. 8K. That one seems to be the overall finest you can buy. Better than some more expensive models. Now, that's a brand that will be a first for me. Because normally that's a brand I avoid it. That one in that TCL, but apparently they're on the come up. So, you know, we'll see how that looks. It's supposed to have the Black blacks and very bright. Like you need an HDR. But um, I think that's about it. Let me get out of here.